today I'm going to tell you the most important things you need to know about renewable energy. And in honor of this, I have my wind turbine earrings on as that's one of the ways that we capture renewable energy. And so you can see in this picture, it's sun, uh, wind. Those are the resources that often pop into your head when we're talking about renewable energy. We're going to talk about the whole landscape of all different types of renewable energy. So renewable energy is meeting a growing portion of our energy use. Many of those are for electricity only, but with a few notable exceptions like biomass that provides transportation and other services. But it is still an energy picture that is dominated by our fossil fuels. So growing wedge, but still relatively small wedge of our energy use. What do we mean by renewable resources? And so here I'm just trying to give you a picture that many of our renewable resources are powered ultimately by the sun. It's our fusion reactor in the sky. With a few exceptions, like geothermal that's powered by the heat in our earth, tides that are powered by the moon, and of course, energy efficiency, which we consider the most renewable resource, which is really powered by human ingenuity. So biomass, for example, can be thought of kind of as a pre-fossil fuel, a fossil fuel that hasn't been crushed in the layers of our earth through time, temperature, and pressure made into a fossil fuel. But again, it's ultimately powered by the sun. We put renewable energy resources into three different categories. Energy efficiency is kind of in its own category. It's the resource where you can provide the service you want without using energy or for using less energy. Um, we can provide lighting with the sun rather than actually having a light bulb. So you're getting the same or a better service using less energy to do it. It's the most renewable energy resource we have. And then we put our other energy resources into these two categories of renewable or semi-renewable. And these categories really have to do with how much we impact the resource by using it. So things like solar, we're not really impacting the sun when we're taking advantage of the solar energy that's hitting the planet. So we're not impacting the resource itself. It's going to continue to provide that solar and we're just making use of that. Things like biomass, for example, we put it in the semi-renewable category because it's only renewable if we manage it carefully and in a sustainable manner. And sometimes we've seen that that's a challenge, how fast a forest replenishes itself after we cut it down as a biomass resource. It makes it much more challenging to use it in a renewable manner. I often get asked, how much is there? Like how much renewable energy resources are there on planet Earth? And I just wanna tell you that the renewable resources are vast. So here we've got the energy consumption in these cute little planets. Just think about that as how much energy we use on the world. This is how much we've got of our stock fuels, like our fossil fuels and uranium, our nuclear fuel. So we've got plenty of those to meet our energy needs. We've got even more of our renewable resources. And these resources over here, this is how much we have per year, not in total like our stock resources. So there are vast amounts of these renewable resources available. And we can use them at all sorts of different scales and for all sorts of different services. So I mentioned at the beginning that some of these are really used for electricity only. That's like our hydro, our wind, our ocean resources. But some of them are used in a variety of ways. Biomass, for example, can be really used in any way that we use fossil fuels today. So that's heating, cooking, lighting, electricity production, and transportation. Geothermal is a heat resource. We can use it for heat or electricity. Same with solar. We can take that solar resource and make heat out of it, or we can use it for electricity. And again, on all sorts of different scales. And of course, energy efficiency, we can use all across our energy systems. Utility scale solar and onshore wind remain the cheapest sources of new electricity generation in the United States. And this study is a study that looks at the levelized cost of electricity. So that's like levelized over the lifetime of a project. And you can see that wind, solar, and combined cycle natural gas, those are the three cheapest. And that's without subsidies. So without mandates, subsidies at federal levels, at state levels, et cetera. Uh, they truly are the cheapest resource, and we see that around the world where wind and solar are the lowest cost electricity resources in three quarters of the world. So really that growth in wind and solar that we're seeing around the world is largely driven by markets. And we see that those resources are the fastest growing. So from a smaller starting point, but here are our renewables such as wind and solar, geothermal, and you can see how fast they're growing. 
compared to our more traditional resources like our fossil fuels. In the United States, we also have abundant renewable resources. So just getting down to the United States, our wind resource in the middle of our country is world-class. It's one of the best onshore wind resources in the world. We have an amazing solar resource throughout the, the entire country, not just in the Southwest, but literally everywhere. And then we have an amazing hydro resource up in the Northwest. We've got an expanding geothermal resource. We actually have the best geothermal resource here in California, but we have an expanding geothermal resource available to us throughout the Western part of the United States. So really vast resources in the United States. Though taking advantage of those renewables, obviously there's a lot that constrains that. You can think about land use, electricity transmission, demand centers, how far are they from demand centers? So pricing, there's all sorts of factors that impact the cost and availability of being able to take advantage of those resources. A lot of the resource that has grown in the United States and in other places in the world has been driven by policy to get things started. And so in the United States, one of the key policies was a renewable portfolio standard, which we saw over most of the country that really drove the adoption of renewable resources in the early days. Now those are being more and more driven by markets. And we can see that these credits, this is looking at the federal tax credit, just an example, they do really lower the levelized costs of our different renewable energy resources till you get to some things where it's almost free to be putting on onshore wind, for example, and it's very inexpensive to be putting on solar PV. But again, even without those subsidies, we have uh, markets really driving the adoption of renewable resources. Let's talk about the environmental impacts of our renewable resources. So these resources have much lower environmental impacts than our fossil fuels. One of the reasons we're looking to our renewable resources is to lower the environmental impacts from our energy use. And so this is just showing you one example of that. Greenhouse gas emissions tend to be really low for our renewable resources, especially compared to our fossil fuels, with a notable exception of biomass, which again, we're burning it just like we are our fossil fuels. So it does have greenhouse gas emissions. Hydropower is a unique one where you can have flooding of vegetation that can release methane as a greenhouse gas, but you can see in terms of the median, they tend to be relatively low when you're looking at the overall system. And then water consumption can be very different depending on our different resources, which can matter depending on the availability of water. Now, some of these like geothermal, it doesn't have to be potable water or drinking water. So there is some variability in terms of the quality of water that is required to be used. The final thing I want to talk about in terms of impacts, our renewable resources tend to lower air pollution in addition to our greenhouse gases. And those air pollution impacts often are more, uh, those burdens are borne more by low income or underserved communities. And so we can see renewables as a way of reducing those energy burdens that are borne disproportionately by those communities. And don't forget energy efficiency, that can help with our equity challenges with energy, but it is truly the most renewable resource we have where we're getting the same or better service and using less energy to do it. Makes all of our challenges in terms of getting their energy, decarbonizing our energy, applying more energy access, makes all of those challenges easier. Okay, so finally, just looking at big picture, this is looking at our global energy consumption over time. We had a biomass age, so we we're very renewable resource in the 1800s. But as we discovered fossil fuels, those have really dominated our energy picture. And the next stage will be a clean energy age, but it is really a question of when and how fast we will get there and be able to make those transitions. Okay, so that's just giving you a big overview of renewable energy resources. If you want to know more, check out our video. Um, and in particular, if you want to know more about how you go about developing a wind or a solar site, the video goes into that in a lot of detail in terms of how you're looking at land resourcing and environmental impacts and permitting and getting buyers and how you'd pay for it in markets and everything. So if you're really interested in that, how the wind or solar development process goes, check out our full video.